In this video, I'm going to show you 10 different ways to eliminate or at least reduce playback lag in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I've divided the video up into three categories to make it a little more comprehensive. The first being your camera settings, which is often an overlooked category in these type of videos because they're probably the reason for your playback lag to begin with. Number two are your settings in Premiere Pro. So everything we can change within the program to make your playback smoother, to get more responsive scrubbing, and faster rendering. And then number three is your computer hardware. So everything that essentially costs money. <laughs> All right, so before we take a look at what we can do within Premiere Pro, let's first acknowledge the impact that camera settings can have. So the first thing you can do is lower your resolution. So film in 1080 rather than 4K, if that makes sense for your project. As far as frame rate goes, I would use 24 frames per second for all your regular shots and only use 60 frames per second when you know you're going to be putting it in slow motion. You can also record at a reduced data rate, which typically means less information for your computer to process. Unless you have the option to record in all I, then your computer will thank you, even though it takes up more space. Choosing a more friendly video codec is also very important. So while most new cameras typically include the option to film in H.265 or HEVC, you might be better off sticking to H.264 or MP4 instead. On your phone, this might mean switching from high efficiency to most compatible. Speaking of recording on your phone, Premiere Pro, especially older versions, hates your phone's variable frame rate. And the only real way to fix this is to actually convert your video to MP4 with something like Handbrake, Media Encoder, or even maybe an online video converter, as most of the Premiere Pro fixes in the rest of this video will not solve your issue. Sorry. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, but what if you need to record something at a higher resolution, or you've already recorded something, and you're now experiencing playback lag already? Well, this next set of hints is going to be everything you can do within Premiere to eliminate or reduce playback lag and get Premiere working like butter. Give me the butter. Having said that, before you actually get started editing, the first thing you're going to want to do is optimize your working conditions, which means closing down any other programs that you have open. So I'm going to close Animate and close Photoshop here so they're not fighting for RAM. And then you should always make sure you put your footage on the fastest drive possible. So over here, I have an old spinning drive, this one right here. And on the right, I have a newer SSD drive. So in this case, I would choose the SSD drive to work from if I can. Next, you're gonna wanna streamline your workspace. So in this case, it might be closing down things that you're not using, like let's say Lumetri scopes up here. So I can just click on this menu and go close panel. And then I would also suggest not using icon view down here as well. So as you can see, the computer is having to process all of these images as you're editing. So instead, let's go down here and click list view, which is much easier on your computer. Another thing that you can do is reduce your playback quality. And there's actually a few ways that we can do that. But if you notice here at first, between these two preview windows, there's a little drop down right here and right here. I'm just gonna focus on this one right now. You can click this, right now it's on full quality playback, but if I drop this down, you can reduce this clip all the way down to 1 8th, and different clips will let you reduce it by more or less. So if I reduce this down to 1 8th and I push play, you're gonna see that the quality kind of gets a little bit worse, right? The resolution gets a little bit fuzzy right there. But just know that if you were to export this, the quality would export at full quality regardless of what you have selected here. I would also suggest clicking on this wrench and unclicking high quality playback as well. So click it right there. So if we go back, you can see that it's not checked anymore. Now, if you're further along in your project, you're probably gonna have to deal with rendering as well. And basically this happens because anything you add to a clip, or maybe there's like a clip mismatch, you've added effects, you've put a slow-mo on it, you know, anything like that, that turns, especially when it turns your, your timeline up here red, that means that it's gonna struggle to play back. So there's a couple ways to deal with this. One, we can go up here to this plus, and if you click on that, it's gonna give you a bunch of new button options that you can drag into here. One of them is this effects button. So I'm gonna click that and drag it in here and then click okay. Now you'll notice that 
When I click this button, it takes the effect away. So if I click it back on, it puts the effect on, click it and it takes away. This is important because if you're trying to like line clips up to, you know, match the music or something, you might want to just take the effects off of everything and then, you know, have a smoother playback so you can move them, align them. And then when you're done, you put the effects back on. But what if you want to preview your video with the effects still on? Well, then you're going to have to render it. So to do that, we're going to click over where we want to start the render. So maybe about right here, I'm going to right click and go mark in. And then over here, I'm going to right click and mark out. So it'll only render this section right here. And then I'll go up to sequence and then I'm going to go render into out. If I didn't mark the in and out points, it would render the entire sequence from in to out. So if I click render into out, then you're going to see this come up and it's going to render this through. And you'll see that this red line and the yellow will all start to turn green. So obviously just think of it like a stoplight. Green means it's going to play through just fine because it's rendered and red means it's going to stop or at least struggle. But just know that if you change anything in terms of effects on this clip again, so if I go back to Lumetri and let's say I turn the temperature down, that that red bar is going to come back and you're going to have to render it all over again. Oh, and something else you might consider, especially if you've, you know, like a civilized human being, you have put your effects, you know, I got my Lumetri color and color emboss now on an adjustment layer instead of right on the clip this time. You can also, similar to this effects button, you can like hide other layers and then, you know, do your edit, line things up with the music. And then when you're done, make the layers visible again. And then, you know, if you turned off your effects, turn it back on before you export. All right. So the last topic that I'm going to go over within Premiere Pro's workspace are proxies. So proxies are basically a low res copy of your files that Premiere uses while editing, but then once you export, you can replace them with your full quality files. And there's two ways that we can do this. One is at the beginning of a project. So if I go file new project, you click right here on ingest settings. In there, you click on ingest and then under copy here, change it to, let's just say create proxies. It can be copy and create proxies if you want, but I'm just gonna select create proxies. My preset is going to be, I'm going to keep it as the lowest one possible here. So low resolution proxy. And I'm going to save my proxy destination as the same as my project. So I'm just going to name this as, you know, proxies. And then I'm just going to browse to pick a different folder. So I'm going to select this proxies test folder and then click OK. Now you notice over here that whatever I import, so if I go to file import and I bring in a few clips, you're going to notice that media encoder is going to open up and then proxies are going to be created from your clips automatically. And since this is being done in encoder, you can actually go back to premiere and work as that's happening in the background. And just so you know, if we go into that proxies test folder, your proxies will look like this. All right, so once all your proxies have been made, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure they're functional. To do that, first we're going to go over here and we're going to right click where it says name and go to metadata display. And then up top, you're just going to type in proxy up here and click on this one that just says proxy and then click OK. Now, all that does is that allows us here just to make sure that these ones are attached. So you might have this slider right here that has all of this stuff. Slide it right to the end probably and you'll see proxy, the one that we just added. And you can see that all four of these have a proxy that is attached to them. And then to actually make them so that we're using the proxies and not the actual clip. So I'm just going to zoom in here. You are going to go up here and to this little plus again. You're going to go plus. And this time you're going to drag in this thing with the toggle proxies, these kind of boxes with the arrows. Just drag that one in and click OK. So right here when I click it, boom, that means we're actually using the proxies. And you might notice your image kind of become a little bit less quality. And if I unclick it, now we're using the regular like full quality clips. The other way to kind of check is 
if you try and scrub, like right now I'm trying to scrub and it's pretty like non-responsive, but if I click the proxies on, now it scrubs like, you know, really, really good. And it'll obviously make your playback a lot smoother as well. But just like the other things, make sure you unclick this before you actually export. So it's exporting the full quality ones and not the actual proxies. If you already started a project and didn't set your proxies at the start, you can still do it by going to your files over here, right clicking and going proxy and create proxies. Then just follow the same steps that we did for the other way. But if for some reason, one of your proxies gets detached from its original clip, like let's say this one, then all you have to do is right click, go up to proxy over to attach proxies. This menu is gonna come up and just click attach and then find the proxy and click OK. OK, so the final things that we're going to look at within Premiere are actually on the back end, so not in the workspace. To find those, you just go up to Edit and then down to Preferences, and we're going to start at Media right here. So in Media, the only thing that I really want to draw your attention to is to click this if you can. So Enable Hardware Accelerated Encoding and Decoding. Just check that off it may require you to restart, as it says right there. Next, let's go to Media Cache. And really, you can, you know, you can change where your Media Cache files go, but it's really this one that I'm gonna draw your attention to in this menu, which is Remove Media Cache Files. So you can manually delete them right here. So just remove them. And then down here, you can also change your automatically delete cache files older than. You might wanna shrink that down to less days, which will then eliminate your cache files earlier to clear up more space. And then the last one is under memory here, and really it's about the RAM here. So installed RAM, I have 64 gigs of RAM. I have RAM reserved for other applications at only six gigs. And then my RAM available for all of these things, like all the Creative Cloud stuff, is at 58 gigabytes. So I've kind of gone with around like a 10% ratio. So if I had 32 gigs of RAM, I'd probably put this at like reserve for other applications around four. If I had 16 gigs, I'd probably put this at, you know, two or three and then put the rest available for, you know, the Creative Cloud stuff, which is Premiere in this case. And then for optimized rendering for, I would just put this on performance and not memory. <laughs> This brings us to our third and final category, which is your computer hardware. So this might mean replacing your entire computer or just certain parts within it. Depends what you got. But instead of going through every single part of your computer that you can obviously replace to make it better, I'm gonna focus on three kind of simple ones that are maybe a little bit cheaper and a little bit more attainable. So the first one is RAM. I'd say 16 gigs is probably kind of your minimum nowadays. And you'd probably want to go 32 gigs if you're working with 4K and then 64 if you're trying to push it with, you know, special effects and stuff like that. And a low blow when no one's looking. Just be aware that no matter how much RAM you add, if the rest of your computer is not up to par and there's other kind of bottlenecks that are slowing it up, then it won't really matter how much RAM you add in because the rest of it's gonna slow it down anyway. So your old hard drives, you know, external or internal, might be slower. So if you replace them with SSD drives, then you might be able to pick up some speed there as well. And then the final thing is to maybe get a better graphics card, which is, you know, compatible with hardware encoding. <laughs> And that's it. That's all the different ways that I can think of to eliminate or at least reduce playback lag in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.